Well, good afternoon and welcome to the Idahoan Show. So one of my uh, primary purposes for the Jefferson was testing custom shotgun slugs. Uh, I have a couple of uh, designs for new shotgun slugs I'm working on. Not quite ready to uh, put those into testing just yet. But in the meantime, I thought it would be good to get a baseline for how this gun performs with some more standard uh, shotgun projectiles. So, uh, today I've got just some standard one ounce lead slugs that we're going to shoot through it. Uh, I've also got some of these copper matrix slugs. Honestly, the only reason I bought these is because they were dirt cheap. They were like a third of the price of a regular lead slug. So I'm a little skeptical about how they're going to perform, but I figured at that price it was worth giving them a shot. And then I'm also going to be trying out a couple of very traditional uh, improvised shotgun slugs, namely uh, a wax slug, you know, made just by dumping the pellets out of a shot shell, mixing them with little molten wax to sort of glue them together and then uh, dumping them back in the wad and letting them solidify. Uh, and then also uh, cut shells, where you know you just cut through the plastic casing into the wad, you know most of the way around the case, and then in theory at least, when the shell is fired, the uh, casing will break off and act as a plastic jacket to hold the uh, shot load together until it hits the target. So, uh, without further ado, I'm going to put some rounds down range first, just at a paper target to see how they're grouping, see what kind of accuracy we're getting. Uh, and then if we're getting acceptable accuracy, maybe we'll try shooting some frozen milk jugs or something with these slugs. Okay, let's start off with our Remington Slugger, you know, one ounce rifled lead shotgun slugs. Well, at 25 yards, it looks like our one ounce Remington lead slug is shooting about a five inch group, uh, probably two inches high and five inches to the right. Uh, that's not great accuracy, but it's certainly usable. And all of the bullet holes look fairly round. I don't see any keyholing going on in this group, so it does seem like the slug is flying stably. Why don't we go ahead and see if we can take out a milk jug with one of these. Now let's give these copper matrix slugs a try. Okay, so looks like the copper matrix slugs are shooting to about the same point as the uh, lead slugs were, although the group size has opened up a bit. And if you look at that hole in the upper left of the group, it's almost a perfect rectangle. Some of the other holes are a bit elongated as well. So it looks to me like these copper matrix bullets are keyholing. There was nothing on the box or packaging that indicated they needed to be fired through a rifled barrel or a rifled choke tube, uh, but they definitely do not appear to be stabilizing in the smoothbore barrel that I've got on the Jefferson. Now, that said, at 25 yards, this is probably still a usable group, so let's go ahead and see if we can hit a milk jug with one of them. Now let's try our wax slugs.
Well, with the wax slugs, our point of impact has definitely shifted relative to the factory slugs that we tested. Uh, however, we're still getting about a six to seven inch group at 25 yards, which is pretty comparable to what we were getting with the copper matrix slugs. Uh, we are seeing some keyholing going on, which is probably to be expected with wax slugs. But, as we saw with the copper matrix bullets, uh, this level of accuracy is probably still usable at this distance. So let's go ahead and see if we can hit a milk jug with one of these wax slugs. And finally, let's see what we can do with the cut shells. Okay, so just like with the other uh, rounds that I tested today, I fired a group of five cut shells. And I'm seeing one hole there, another hole there. I'm trying to remember if that hole was there before or not. Uh, I know this hole is new, and this hole is new. This one really looks like it was two, and this one certainly is big enough it could have been multiple hits, but I didn't fire enough rounds for both of those to have been multiple hits. And then we also see a spattering of smaller holes from you know individual shot pellets, so clearly there was at least one cut shell that broke apart and you know, didn't stay together until impact. Uh, so, in any case, we went from a six inch group or better with the other rounds that we tested to something like a 30 inch group with cut shells at 25 yards. Uh, now, maybe there's more of a technique to making cut shells than I was aware of. Um, you know, admittedly, this is the first time that I've ever tried making cut shells, but given the performance that we're seeing here, I think it will probably also be the last. Well, I think that gives me an adequate baseline for future testing of custom slugs. Uh, today, I really just wanted to get some idea of what to expect uh, when shooting, you know, standard commercial and uh, common improvised slugs out of the Jefferson, and now I feel like I've got an idea of what to expect. So uh, that'll provide a good point of reference as I start to develop custom shotgun slugs and test their performance out here. Anyway, until next time, thanks for watching The Idahoan Show.